Good day and welcome to another episode of Focus On. I'm Zanella Morrison. In this episode, we are assessing Africa's energy future and what needs to be done in order for more Africans to gain access to sustainable energy. The goal of universal access to modern energy calls for investments of up to 250 billion US dollars per year. And as Africa's industries, be it commerce and agriculture and others, expand, so does the need for productive uses of energy. Joining us to discuss Africa's development energy sector is Nadia Harkinson, Senior Vice President for Africa at Siemens Energy. Nadia, thank you so much for joining me. Nadia, in your view, what are some of the hurdles that are affecting Africa's energy future as a whole? So I see three key uh, hurdles that currently limit the progress in the development of Africa. One being the lack of investment into the continent. The second being the high cost of capital and the third being the energy poverty. Um, and let me address the three points. The lack of investment um, is uh, key. We see that only two to three percent of global energy investment went into Africa, although Africa accounts for a fifth of the global population. So this shows that uh, we need to accelerate the investment into the continent. Uh, we also uh, see through various reports uh, made by the African Development Bank and IEA that the actual investment required is around 250 billion per year for the continent to be able to address uh, the climate issue and access to uh, clean and sustainable and affordable energy. The second point is around the high cost of capital which uh, is, of course, uh, related to the high risk profile. Um, compared to advanced um, economies, um, Africa has the additional burden of uh, having two to three times higher uh, cost of capital for energy projects. And, of course, this on top of the fact that many of the countries are currently in a debt uh, spiral with fiscal issues being in discussion with IMF, on support. Um, so this is, of course, also a, a key uh, factor. And then we have the entire context of the energy poverty. We know the context of 600 million people, which is around 43% of the cont continent's total population that still do not have access to electricity. Meanwhile, it's a young and growing uh, population, going from around 1.4 billion to estimation of 2.5 billion by 2050. And this is a staggering challenge with obviously the rising energy demand, uh, people moving from uh, rural communities uh, to more urban uh, cities. And the challenge of this is, of course, immense, and it could become a, a significant uh, catastrophe if we do not address these issues uh, with force and with, uh, with accuracy. And, and we now, Nadia, also need to look at some of those actions um, that are critical to the continent's energy transition success. Um, how do you think these energy, what are these uh, actions and how are we progressing to make them into tangible solutions? We must ensure access to affordable, sustainable, and reliable energy. This is the foundation for socioeconomic growth. And we must, must also recognize that the energy transition overall must be embraced as the most significant socioeconomic and environmental transformation since the Industrial Revolution. Now, I believe that to make the energy transition a success, five points are crucial. Expand renewables strengthen electricity grids, drive efficiency improvements and decarbonization, prepare conventional power infrastructure for the energy transition, and secure supply chains and minerals. And all of these challenges and objectives require collaboration. So no country, no company, company, no individual can be successful alone. And we need to see, of course, an enhanced collaboration between public and private sector, but also there is potential for more and improved collaboration 
between the countries in Africa. We need to accelerate the investment to really create a potential green industry, uh, making Africa a green energy hub that not only serves its own energy need and closes the poverty, but also becomes a potential exporter of uh, green energy, whether it's in molecules or electricity. So in the process of implementing uh, some of the things we've spoken about, there are also bridging technologies that are coming into play that fast track energy de development whilst also ensuring that we are looking at this uh, to ensure that it is a green energy transition. Um, you know, speak to me more of these technologies and how they are working out in the field. Grids, as I've mentioned, are the backbone of the electricity network. An infrastructure here needs to be developed to also interconnect uh, countries and also in the future Africa with its neighboring regions. Uh, we know that additional renewable power with wind and solar also provides a certain complexity in managing uh, the grid due to the intermittency. And here, all of these challenges also need to be uh, um, addressed when preparing and developing the energy infrastructure of, of each country. Uh, there is also uh, the aspect of hydrogen, uh, where we, of course, have the objective of also as far as possible using existing infrastructure uh, to deploy hydrogen. And here we are very active in uh, developing our gas turbines to also be able to operate on hydrogen. Uh, and we are preparing that for them to be able to run 100% on hydrogen by 2030. And the parties involved, we look at development cooperation as well as private investments and how they link together to enable energy transition in Africa. What kind of cooperation do you believe is necessary? So multilateral cooperation at different levels and across sectors are really key. Uh, and here, of course, what is required is uh, stewardship uh, from governments and making sure that policies and uh, regulatory framework is uh, suitable to uh, incentivize uh, a more renewable uh, infrastructure development, as well as provide the right incentives to attract foreign direct investment. And here, different industrial sectors, whether from energy, finance, academia, uh, government all need to work together in collaboration. Uh, foreign uh, investment into energy transition should be directed to projects uh, and companies that also have a strong ESG focus. Uh, and we need to also here consider um, uh, and be mindful not to uh, encourage a new resource imperialism. So we need to focus on developing local economies and communities in Africa. So we encourage an industrialization with developing local value add instead of just exporting raw materials and refining the products and manufacturing them elsewhere. Strong local partnership here is fundamental. And uh, here I can only highlight our strong track record as Siemens Energy in supporting and developing local econom economies, working with local partners, uh, working with governments, driving and supporting energy infrastructure developments, such as what we did in Egypt and are uh, currently also doing in Nigeria. Uh, this is uh, key for success. Nadia, according to Africa's energy outlook for 2022, universal access to affordable electricity will only be possible through tripling the rate at which electricity is provided. Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda, they seem to be on track to achieve this by 2030. Why is Sub-Saharan Africa lagging behind? What can be done to quicken the pace here? Well, firstly, let's acknowledge that all countries are in different status uh, right now. Africa is 54 countries and uh, the access to electricity looks very different from country to country. Uh, and the solution and way forward also looks different from country to country. But we must acknowledge that there is disparity uh, in the population and where it's based. And it's a challenge to reach 
uh, rural uh, population and commun uh, communities. And here also countries need to decide how to develop the electricity grid uh, network to make sure that it reaches uh, the majority of the population and then define how to manage uh, the rural uh, communities, whether through mini grids and off grid systems. This is, of course, also part of the solution. We also, of course, uh, need to look at the importance of uh, political and government aspects. Uh, in many countries in Africa, we have instability uh, with uh, political governance. Uh, we have uh, to address that in uh, some countries we uh, still see corruption, which also hinders effective planning, implementation, and then uh, again also um, adds to the risk profile of this co of these countries. Uh, geographic uh, and demographic uh, challenges, again, it's a diverse geography uh, with remote and, and sometimes hard to reach areas. Uh, so it, it it cannot be understated that it is a challenge, uh, but it can only be addressed to collective, collaborative action and leadership. In the light of the increasing importance of the fact that these have to be renewable energy sources, particularly in the context of Africa's energy future, can you elaborate on Siemens' energy strategy for advancing these renewable energy technologies and how they're going to go about fostering this widespread adoption um, in Africa of uh, this renewable energy? Our priority is energy security by building the foundation with a resilient electricity network and building sufficient generation capacity and the infrastructure required to transmit and distribute the energy. This is the critical priority. Grid stability uh, is key. Again, with the increase needed uh, on renewables, this creates challenges that must be addressed with expansion of grids, uh, resilient activities, and stability aspects. And again, all countries are very different. So the way we address it is to collaborate which, with each uh, individual country, support with individual energy roadmaps, and uh, drive energy studies. Again, this is what we did successfully in Egypt and in Nigeria. Then we have, of course, uh, the activities that we are driving to support the hydrogen development in Africa. We have already a lot of activities with some first mover uh, countries such in Namibia, Morocco, etc. And here they are uh, clear on defining hydrogen as being part of their energy strategy, both to serve their own decarbonization uh, strategy, uh, whether it be in industry um, or um, as, as part of their export strategy, as part of building a market for hydrogen in uh, Africa. It's a topic I never tire to engage on. Thank you so much. My guest, Nadia Harkinson, Senior Vice President for Africa at Siemens Energy. Thank you so much for providing insight into the developing African energy sector. It's truly a beacon of light for the future, but that's where we wrap it today for Focus On. Until next time, from me, Zanella Morrison, it's goodbye for now.